the Bassmaster Classic, the Red Crest Championship, and two idiots in the Major League Fishing that crashed the boat. That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, vlogs, tackle reviews, and more, click that like and subscribe button and become part of the team and family. I really do appreciate it. Well, it's Monday, and today is the first day after the Bassmaster Classic, the greatest, biggest bass fishing tournament there is. And we have to say congratulations right up front to Justin Hamner, who won it wire to wire. And it was interesting, but not that interesting. And it was a weird classic, but we're gonna talk about some of the stuff that went on. So the Bassmaster Classic is the biggest bass fishing tournament, the Super Bowl of fishing tournaments that there that's out there. 56 anglers make their way to Tulsa to compete on Grand Lakes of the Cherokees. For the Bassmaster Classic participants, it's a full week with practice. When they start off, they get to go to practice. Then they have the Night of Champions. Evidently, chicks dig fishermen. Who knew? This is the one night that we gather together all year long where everybody takes their hats and glasses off and dresses up nice and agrees not to argue about forward-facing sonar. There's been some arguments. Ha ha. Okay, just move him off the stage. And other media obligations that make for a very full week before the tournament. And quite honestly, this is a rough week for a lot of new anglers because they're not used to the demands that are put on you because of the classic being the biggest, the Super Bowl of fishing. So while there's a lot of extracurricular things that they're doing, they need to stay focused on what's gonna happen on Friday. And when they get to the tournament, when the tournament starts, they have not only an amazing crowd at the launch site but if you are very big or you're in the lead or have a camera on your boat there's a good chance that there's gonna be a flotilla of boats following you around and that's something that you need to that, well first off you really can't prepare for but at the same time it's if you have that flotilla you kind of know you're in the in the the realm of that top 10 or even doing really well but it is very tough it's a very tough schedule for all of the anglers that are classic competitors and the first day of the tournament, well, it wasn't what we all had thought. I think a majority of us thought forward-facing sonar was gonna play a big part of the whole weekend. And while that Friday, it played a bigger part than Saturday and Sunday because the weather changes, but we found out quickly that this was the kind of tournament I think bass fans needed. We needed to see guys go out there and go fishing. We needed to see, to see people go out there and beat the banks and catch fish. Now, Grand Lake is different than most places because there's so many boat docks and so much structure for the fish to go to and they held to those structures or just outside of those structures and forward facing sonar while it wasn't the ultimate dominating factor of the winds the majority of the guys still used it a little bit but not as much as we've seen in the first two tournaments what was fun to watch was we got to see a jerk bait in action we got to see people flipping jigs and spinner baits and get back to the old school way of fishing because right now forward facing sonar is kind of taking that group of anglers to the next level and there's a lot of people that don't like forward facing sonar and needed to see who could catch fish without forward facing sonar and a lot of guys who have done well with forward facing sonar over the first two weeks or first two tournaments and are and qualified for the classic just didn't do well well at the classic and it doesn't mean they're not going to do well after they leave florida because florida's probably will still be they're not going to use it as much but it wasn't as prominent that as the first two tournaments and that was really nice to see and while we wanted as fans older fans wanted to see beating the banks what didn't happen at the classic was we didn't really see any giant fish and i think grant lake is going through almost like a transition phase. I think you heard Jason Christie say, this is this place is gonna be busting in two weeks. Unfortunately, that's what everybody says after every tournament when you do bad. I think we hit it at the wrong time. Other guys didn't hit it wrong, but there weren't giant bags. Of course, it's always gonna get better in the future. It always gets better in the future. But I wasn't really, as a fan, I wasn't really happy with what happened this weekend. I wanted to see big fish. And like I said, I think Grand Lake is going through a transition where there have been a restocking of Grand Lake and the amount of pressure that's on there. And you just don't see really, really giant fish up there. 
So when you caught a five pounder, you were really happy because that was a big fish. Whereas the first two tournaments that Bass had went to, a five pound fish, fish wasn't big. So while I was excited by Justin Hamner winner, because honestly, this was a guy that, that needed this. Fishing is a very tough way to make a good living. Now, if you do well, great. If you don't, then, you're, then you'll be stressed out. And this happens with a lot of people. Brandon Palinick slept in the back of his car for years. I know my buddy Brandon Card had a hard time the first few years. There's that first couple of years. I mean, look at Jacob Fouts. He's still probably paying for his own stuff. It's hard to get to the level that KVD and Justin Jacob Wheeler and Dustin Connell and these big name guys get to. It takes several years of really grinding it out. And I don't know if it's a really successful life plan to be a professional bass angler. But getting off the negative, congratulations to Justin Hamner. You deserve it, dude. Congratulations. You absolutely put it down for the last three days. And it was fun to watch. And I do believe you deserved it more than as much as anyone, to be honest. So congrats. And next, the Red Crest was at Lay Lake. And it was... It was as good as you could have advertised. It was a great place to go fishing. Dustin Connell, Williams second Red Crest Championship, Jacob Wheeler being in the mix. It was a Ford Facing Sonar dominated fishing tournament again. And the guys who are really, really exceptional at Ford Facing Sonar are the guys who came in the top 10. John Cox, who didn't was beating the uh, the banks didn't use forward-facing sonar. There were some guys out there catching largemouth, but they came. They didn't have a chance at beating Dustin and those top five or six guys. Those guys were all forward-facing sonar. Had a school of fish. They were beating them to death. And it's a shame that that's how it had to work out. But Dustin Connell is quite honestly, he's probably he probably be, should be in the mix for the best angler on the planet right now. He won second tournament for BPT. Won the Red Crest. He's won like five tournaments in the last couple few years. He. He's absolutely amazing and he should be in that talk of that same sentence as the Jacob Wheelers as the as the Brandon Palamix as as a few other guys there's a, a handful of really talented anglers who are great at all-around fishing and the Wheelers the Connells the Palamix the Patrick Walters those guys can do it all and even if forward-facing sonar isn't working for them they still find fish fishing the old-fashioned way but Dustin Connell really did put it down and while there was no surprise that Dustin won it because he was on his home lake, having Kevin Van Dam come back and just see him just didn't have a good tournament, seeing Dakota Ebert come back and join PPT for one last tournament, or maybe he's in heavy hitters, and then Jordan Lee come back, and really you saw that those guys weren't in the mix of things. Matt Becker, a whole bunch of other guys were just again dominating MLF, and it was it was a really fun tournament to watch. Other than all you saw was guys staring down, but it was it was a good tournament it was a it, in my opinion it was the best red crest championship i've seen since they've started mlf bpt and last but not least they had a major league fishing toyota series here on harris chain which is physically right behind us and they were out there fishing the harris chain lakes and they had a boat crash let me say first and foremost the person video i'm going to use is eric i don't know how to pronounce his last name it's eric pacman fishing on youtube i will put a link in the description below that tells you his youtube channel and where i got this video from but there were two guys that crashed going to lake apopka i should say i have if you don't know anything about lake apopka lake apopka used to be an absolutely Magnific magnificent fishery years and years ago and because there was a lot of um sludge and crap that was put into the lake the lake was actually a dead lake probably close to 15 16 17 years ago and the city of apopka which is where i live paid for a bunch of people to come out and kind of get as much sludge out of certain places that they could and they they put out hydrilla and they put out um lily pads and a whole bunch of stuff they also put in i think they put in almost a million bass a year into lake apopka to make it the best best fishery or make it come back to where it was. And Lake Apopka was part of the Harris Chain Lakes. And to get into Lake Apopka, you have to lock in. And the lock to get from the chain into Apopka is arguably one of the worst locks there is. I'm not taking anything away from the people that work there. It has nothing to do. It only allows two or three boats at max. And you literally have probably 12 to 14 feet 
on either side total as you go through most of the lock and the way back through to Apopka. And Apopka really is fantastic fishing. I'm going to just say this. For the last few years, there's been more 10-pound bass shocked because they go around in shock to see how the, the fishery is doing. There's been more 10-pound bass shocked in Lake Apopka than any place in the state of Florida. So when a tournament comes here, if you can dial in and figure out what is going on in Apopka, there's a pretty good chance you're going to do well. And the fishing in the last five or six years has really blossomed and it is absolutely fantastic fishing. It's really tough fishing, but it's fantastic fishing. And if you ever want to see a ton of big gators, Lake Apopka, the Apopka Wildlife Trail is unbelievable, especially when it's cold. Getting back to it. Two guys, I don't want to say their names, two morons, which I should just say, decided that they were going to run the idle zones in Lake Apopka. And one boat was coming through where the railroad tracks is and idled down a little bit. And the guy behind him ran his ass over. And I should say, you're going to run an idle zone to get to the place faster than anybody else. You're in a very, not very wide area for a boat or two boats, or you're in a professional tournament and you know you're not supposed to, to you know go all out through an idle zone you shouldn't be in the tournament these guys should be banned from fishing tournaments these guys should be banned like the walleye fishermen if they're going to do stupid things that can possibly kill somebody because quite honestly when you see the wreck and you're probably watching it right now you'll be amazed that nobody got killed i mean it's it's horrible the boat is on top of the other boat and when you look at it you don't even realize the boat is on top of the other boat you don't see the motor you don't see anything major league fishing needs to really justify and rectify this situation and ban these anglers from ever fishing another tournament because if they're going to do this who knows what other stupid moronic and cheating things that they will do so i don't think that they should be allowed in tournaments and i'm sorry for the guys that did it i'm hopefully you guys are all right but you guys are absolute asshole morons and that's just my opinion you shouldn't have been running the wake zone and you're lucky to be alive but we need stricter consequences for idiots that do things like that so hopefully major league fishing is taking it into effect but i'm not holding it too much into the wheelhouse of what's going on so there you have it what's happened the last couple weeks in bass fishing if you like this kind of content hit that like and subscribe button make sure you take a kid fishing get your fish on i'll talk to you very soon Thanks and cheers.